What's wrong, George? Hash. Last night, meatloaf, night before stew. Don't cattle come in one piece no more? <laughs> George, you should be thankful for this with the money I have to spend. Well, the uh, spoon wheel's a little short at the present. Why don't you just charge it and get something that I can get my teeth into? Charge it. Huh? Fine chance. Do you know what the butcher told me our credit rating is? Mm, what? Triple Z. <laughs> hmm. Triple Z. I never heard that one before. It means don't trust him, even if he pays cash. Well, I brought the whole thing up. Let's forget it. Well, as long as you did bring it up, we won't forget it. It's high time you went out and got a job so we can live like normal people. Now, look, honey, what would be the sense of me going out and get a job till I find out just what I fitted for? You told me that 22 years ago, George. Well, oh, honey, both I'd have went out and got a job 22 years ago and become a success at it. How do you think I'd feel if all at once I discovered I wasn't fitted for it? George, I've been giving this a great deal of thought lately. And what I'm going to say is nothing I'm saying in the heat of the moment. But unless you do something about getting a job and going to work, I'm going to leave you until you do. But, Sapphire, you can't do that. I can't? Look, George, do you realize I've practically been supporting you for the last 20 years? Yeah, I realize it. That's the reason you can't leave me this way. I'm entitled to at least two minutes notes. How do you do? Oh, how do you do there? What can I do for you? Well, uh, uh, that is, the uh, thing is, uh, maybe I'd better come back tomorrow. Now, wait a minute. If you're interested in a job, this is the place. Well, yes, sir, I guess that's what I want is a job. Well, come in, sit down. Oh, uh, thank you, sir. I'm sure we can find a job for a man of your caliber. Yeah? I got a pretty high caliber. What have you got? Well, uh, tell me, uh, have you any references from your last job? Oh, yes, and I brought it right along here with me, too. Uh, there you is. <laughs> These references from your last job? Yeah, that fancy paper don't hold up too well, does it? I should say not. To whom it may concern, this is to advise that I have found George Stevens to be a highly competent automobile mechanic, and I would not hesitate to call on him again should I have more trouble with my Stanley Steamer. <laughs> well, you see, the big trouble with them Stanley Steamers was the driver was feeding too much coal in the boiler. This is the last job you held? Yes, sir. Well, tell me, Stevens, have you had any other accomplishments in the business world since then? Oh, yes, sir. I had one accomplishment that I was very proud of. Yes? And what was that? Well, when unemployment insurance uh, first come in in 1937, I was the first one in line in the whole country, and that includes Hawaii. <laughs> that is something to boast about. Well, Stevens, uh, on the basis of your experience, there's only one job I have here for you. That's at Baker University over on the west side here. Oh, over at Baker. Well, something like that would be all right, uh, mixing with the intelligentsia. Well, it isn't quite that, Stevens. It's a job in the maintenance department up there. It's not easy, but it pays $50 a week, and it's the only thing we have. Maintenance, uh, that ain't much of a job. Well, that depends. If you got money in the bank, it's not much. If you got creditors on your neck, I'll dig it. <laughs> now, this is the man to see. Report to work at 7 o'clock tomorrow. Yeah, I'll go over there right after supper. That's 7 o'clock in the morning. What? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, Amos. He started working bright early this morning. Well, the kingfish finally went away. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure glad to hear that. Yeah, uh, at Baker's University, huh? Yeah, yeah. He was in winters in one of the finest institutions in the country. Uh, he ought to be back pretty soon. You know, I wonder how he stood up on the first day's work. Well, I guess the old kingfish can... Hey, Amos. Hmm? Come here. Here he come. <laughs> Oh. 
Uh, bend me easy, boys. I don't want nothing to snap on me. Uh, King Fish, you's a wreck. What time did you start work this morning? Uh, seven o'clock. Well, what time did you start feeling bad? Quarter to seven. <laughs> oh, I tell you, boys, this work is a dangerous thing. Yeah, well, uh, what happened here, King Fish? Well, Calhoun, when you go to work over there, you got to punch the time clock. And at 7 o'clock uh, this morning, my eyes were completely closed. And I just put my hand right through the glass. <laughs> Holy mackerel. Yeah, and there I was with my arteries wide open and a full day's work in front of me. Well, uh, what did they start you out with, King Washing Washing windows. And you ought to see the windows they got. Yeah, I guess there's quite a few windows around Baker. Quite a few. I was washing windows for three hours before I come to a wall. Well, you get used to it, Kingfish. I'll see you later, fella. So long, uh, Amos. So long, son. Yeah, Calhoun, the work is hard, all right. But I need money so bad I can't afford to give it up. Cause Sapphire done told me if I didn't make $200 to pay the bill, she gonna leave me. Well, what you gonna do about it, Kingfish? Well, Calhoun, between the window washing and the flow waxing, I think I got a little idea today. What's that, Kingfish? Well, you know, Andy was always talking about he wanted an education. Yeah, yeah, I heard him say that. Well, I just trying to figure how I might be able to get Andy to take over my job. Take your job? Yeah, now, if I can make the boy believe that he was working his way through Baker University and hand over a paycheck to me each week to pay for his intuition. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But wait a minute, Kingfish. How are you going to make the boy think he's going to college? Well, Calhoun, now, when you consider that I once sold Andy a half interest in George Washington bid for $30, this is going to be easy as pie. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to you. <laughs> what are you doing in that red nightgown? A nightgown? Andy, I'll have you know, these are the official robes of my position with Baker University. You mean that you is disconnected with Baker University? Yeah, Baker University has opened up these home study branches all over the city. And I had flattered to see that they asked me to open this branch. I is the administrator here. Oh, you is, huh? Yeah, i just busy here, uh, figuring out, uh, registering for the new siesta. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, 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 Andy, uh, sit right down. I can always spare a few minutes to talk to a stupid friend. Oh, well, well thanks, Kingfish. You know, I sure wish I had more education. Well, it's a good thing to have, Andy, and, uh, but look, Andy, when you went to grade school, how far did you go? Oh, about, uh... About three miles. <laughs> I cut to the cow pasture. Look, Andy, I mean, how long did you go to school? Oh. Well, as I can remember, I spent two terms in the second grade. Two terms, huh? Yeah, uh, Wilson's and Coolidge's. <laughs> Andy, I got thinking, yeah. It's a shame that a man with the brain that you have ain't had a chance to develop him and go to college. Well, I thought of that a lot myself, but uh, the only thing is, I know you can't go from second grade right into college. Well, that's a pretty big leap, all right. But you know, Andy, there's a lot of people go to college on the entrance examination. Now, if you could pass the IQ test and the entrance examination, you could get enrolled. Well, I don't think I stand much chance on that. Look, Andy, as a special favor to you, being you as one of my loving brothers, I'm going to let you take a crack at this examination and see what happens. Or uh, step over here to the blackboard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, Andy, I uh, see the Board of Education run out of pointers. Oh, yeah. All right, what's that, Andy? That's all right. 
And what's that, Andy? Q. Well, you didn't have no trouble with your IQ test. Boola boola. Oh. I don't think I could never pass no entrance examination. Well, Andy, I admit they're a little rough, uh, but up to now, I am impressed. Oh, you is? Look, Andy, suppose I give you your entrance test right here and now. Who knows? Maybe you'll go to college after all. Well, I don't see no harm in trying. Okay, Kingfish. Well, step right over here to the desk, Andy. Yeah, uh, step right there and sit down. Oh, yeah. I just happen to have an uh, examination here. Uh, question number one. How many feet in a mile? Question number two. Name the five major oceans. Question number three. What is the longest river in the United States? Oh, yeah. Uh, this place question, yeah. How many feet in a mile? Yeah, Sandy. Uh, whose feet? Andy, they talking about the 12 inch feet. Oh, yeah. Well, now, Andy, you got 10 minutes to finish the test. And another thing, these tests is uh, conducted on the honor system. Uh, excuse me, Andy. Uh, <laughs> now, Andy, all the uh, answers uh, to the test is on page 21 in this book right here. Now, I'm going to leave the room. And remember, Andy, you ain't supposed to look on page 21 where the answer is. Yeah. <laughs> Page 21. <laughs> page 21. Uh, yeah, that's the page I ain't supposed to look at. I don't see how he ever got to the second grade. <laughs> well, time's up. Uh, turn in the test papers. Well, I don't think I've done so good, Kingfish. I didn't put nothing down. Mm, well, there's no rush things here. Let's read the paper. Uh, you know, on these entrance tests, uh, you get 5% uh, for the answers, 10% for honesty, and 85% for neatness. Well, uh, here's 85% that we know of. Yeah, but I didn't put nothing on the paper. Well, you couldn't find nothing no neater than that. <laughs> and nobody can argue about your honesty. The only thing you slipped up on was the answers. You mean that gets 95%? That's right, Andy. Congratulations. You are now a student at Baker University. Bula Bula. Well, I guess if you got a brain, it'll show up sooner or later. Oh. <laughs> uh, when do I start with the home study stuff? Well, Andy, I guess you uh, no doubtless know that Baker University is not a free institution. Uh, just a little matter of your intuition. Intuition? Uh, what's that? That's paying for your course. Oh, well, how much does that run? Well, uh, $50 a week. $50 a week? Hmm. Here I go and pass the entrance examination and flunk out on the intuition. I ain't got that kind of money, Kingfish. Well, Andy, frankly, I knew you didn't. But with students with such high marks as yours, we bend over backward to let them work their way through college. You mean the college pays me $50 a week so I can pay for the course? That's right, Andy. I'll get you a job over in the main building for $50 a week. And you hand me over the paycheck and you'll be getting an education. Yeah, well, I guess the education is worth working for. Okay, Kingfish. Well, Andy, I'll see that you get your paper for your home study course tomorrow. Good. And in the meanwhile, uh, as far as your work is concerned, why you give this to the man in the maintenance department uh, at 7 o'clock. Okay, I'll get over there right after supper. Andy, that's 7 o'clock in the morning. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Calhoun, everything working like a charm. Well, I'm uh, so sure glad to hear that, Kingfish. Yeah, after the boy passed the examination test while he went to work the next morning. Good. That was two weeks ago he went over to Baker. Mm -hmm. And it's a good thing for Andy that he went to work at the university because after being there a while, the boy commenced to picking up a little polish. And after his first day on the job, he come back to the office here to get started on his home study. 
The boy come in and I handed him a Baker University prospectus that I happened to pick up. He was really impressed. Then to let him know that it was college stuff he was getting, I gave him a book on chemistry that I got from the library. <laughs> we had a little trouble uh, getting a grip on it. Didn't seem to make no sense to him from any angle. But he was determined to get an education. So he took the book and went on home to study. That night he managed to dig up some chemicals to try a couple of the experiments. He really went at it, mixing one chemical with another and making notations of everything that happened. He finally was ready to complete the final phase of the experiment. <laughs> He brought me the check for his intuition. I cashed it and went home and gave it to Sapphire. Boy, was that gal excited. And as a reward, she showed me what we were going to have for supper. Yeah, Calhoun, right then I started getting meat in one piece again. <laughs> So that's the story of the last two weeks, huh, Kingfish? That's right, Calhoun. You know, Kingfish, if Baker University ever give a course in sneakiness, you'd graduate in magna cum laude, mouth. <laughs> well, has the boy been working very hard over there? Oh, yeah. You see, they're having graduation over there in two weeks, and Andy busy fixing up the auditorium for the festivities. Oh. Now, all I got to do is keep the boy working for another hundred bucks. And that'll give me the two hundred dollars that we need to pay the bill, and then Sapphire won't leave me. Yeah, you sure got a gold mine in that boy, Kingfish. Oh, I tell you, Calhoun. Well, if it ain't Student Brown, what's the good word? Kingfish, I quit. Quit? Why, Andy, you can't quit. You just can't. Listen, Kingfish. Just working during the day and studying at night is too much for me. I was all tuck it out. I'm going to have to throw in the sponge. And uh, you can't quit at a time like this. What you mean at a time like this? Well, uh, 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 it ain't about two weeks till graduation. You mean I was going to graduate in two weeks like the rest of them? Why, certainly, Andy. That's why I've been cramming you with knowledge. Uh, now, wait a minute, Kingfish. I always hear that these students go to college four years before they graduate. How come I'm doing it in four weeks? I'd like to hear the answer to that question myself. Very <laughs> logical. Now, you see these students that go to college just for four years, they spend their time playing football and going to fraternity meetings and slooching down for a taste and walk. Well, uh, actual, there's only about four weeks of real study. Oh, I see. And in the home study course, you eliminate all that other stuff. That's right, Andy. Yeah, well, if I'm going to be a senior and graduate in two weeks, it'd be silly for me to quit now when I was only a slop mower. Oh, uh, there. <laughs> Biology, what's that? Well, that's a study of bugs and insects. Bugs and insects? What good is that? Well, any that'll prepare you for any field you might choose, uh, whether it's medicine, zoology, or extermination. Oh, well. Okay, King Chris, I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, well, so long, Andy. Andy. You gonna graduate the boy, King Fish? That's right, Calhoun. How you gonna make good on that? I'll worry about that when the time comes. <laughs> well, Brown, that just about does it. Yeah, everything is ship shape for the graduation this afternoon. Uh, you don't mind if I go now, do you? No, Brown. Thanks for everything. Okay, thank you. Say, Kingfish. Uh, Oh, hi, Brother Joe. Hello, Andy. Hey, is the Kingfish around? No, I was just waiting for him, Andy. Well, do you know where he is? I got no idea. Holy smoke, this is a fine how to do. This is the day I graduated from Baker University. You is? Yeah, and I ain't got much time either. He didn't give me no seat number, no cap and gown, no nothing. I don't know nothing about nothing, Andy. Well, I guess I'll have to take over myself. Otherwise, I won't graduate.
Is there anything you want me to tell the kingfish when he comes in? No, don't bother. This will teach me a lesson not to depend on an uneducated man. Well, bula bula there, Joe. It is the knowledge that these students have gained here in the past four years that must be their tools with which they will mold their future. Today, you are men who must share the burden of yours and America's future. You have the knowledge. Now you must go forth and gain the experience. You will no longer have the guidance of an institution such as this. You will be wholly on your own. And you must blend the knowledge that you have gained here with the wisdom with which you will come in contact on your various roads to success. And now I wish to congratulate you, one and all, and wish you every success in your endeavors. I thank you. We will now distribute the diplomas. George Albert. Tom Armstrong. Well, it sure is a great feeling us finally graduating after all the work we didn't put in. Lewis Armour. Yes, it's been a long haul, but we finally made it. Yeah. I wasn't too sure I was going to graduate. That last year of chemistry nearly ruined me. Congratulations. Did you take chemistry? Oh, yeah. That well. I finished that in one night. <laughs> one night? Ralph Ames. Yeah, something exploded and changed my eyebrow. <laughs> but biology was tougher. That took me two nights. <laughs> Robert Arthur. You know, I'm getting sort of tired, too. You know, four weeks is a long time to go to college. You mean four years? No, four weeks. Uh, you see, I wasn't in on the smooching and that other stuff. <laughs> My name is Brown. I guess they'll call me the next few names. George Zanzibar. Congratulations. And now that the diplomas have been given out, Not here. How could a thing like this happen? There seems to be an oversight here somewhere. What is your name? Uh, Andrew H. Brown. There should be a diploma here for you. Yeah, there should be, because I done trickled it here. <laughs> you look very familiar to me. I've seen you around here, I'm sure. Well, I was the maintenance man during the day. I done took the four weeks home study course at night. Four weeks? Of course, I didn't do no smooching like the rest of the fellows. <laughs> carry on the ceremonies, please. I'd like to have a word with Mr. Brown. Yeah. Come into my office, Mr. Brown. Kingfish, you done zipped me, and I want my $200 back. Now, wait a minute, Andy. Now, you signed the application. I give you the prospectus. You took the course, and the deal is closed. Kingfish, I'm going to let you have it right in the jaw. Now, wait a minute, Andy. Uh, you wouldn't hit a man with glasses on, would you? You ain't got on no glasses. Oh, yeah, Andy. Uh, 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 contact lenses. <laughs> oh. Kingfish, you going to give me my money back, ain't you? No, Andy, I ain't. And I'm standing on my constitutional rights. Well, I guess you win, Kingfish. But I learned one thing from this home study course. You is a bigger crook than I thought you was. Well, that alone is worth two hundred dollars. It'll teach you to be on guard in the future. <clears throat> well, hello, honey. How is ya? Oh, just fine, George. Just fine. Well, I guess we both feel pretty good. Uh, after all, that two hundred dollars I give you, we got all our bills paid and don't owe nobody nothing. Well, George, I got a little surprise for you. Yeah? Uh-huh. I didn't pay the bills with that $200. You didn't, huh? No. Inasmuch as you've gone to work and have a steady job, I decided to do something to help you make a success of it. Yeah, what's that, honey? Well, Andy Brown sent a man over who's selling home study courses from Baker University. And I gave 
give him $200 for your enrollment. Oh, 